I will go down the ship with this organization. I don't want to be anywhere else. I love this organization. So from that aspect, okay, cool. That's fine. I love that. I love that aspect of it. I don't love the aspect of saying that, hey, I want to be a, I'm a competitor, but if I'm fine if, you know, we just went down with the ship and didn't make the playoffs for the, for the next five years. That can blow up in your face, and I'm sure every fan around here, every fan around here is not cool with that. I don't think every player is cool with that. I don't think every coach is okay with that. I don't think every executive and owner and member of the ownership group is okay with saying, hey, we gave it our old try, but we didn't make it to the playoffs for the next five years. I don't think Uncle Joe Lacob would be cool with that. Again, I understand what Draymond is trying to say. He's trying to say that I want to be with this organization organization for the rest of my life. I've already said the next five years, well, he's got three years off on the deal. We're getting another extension here well, that, uh, with the contract. The, so, We're getting another two-year extension. That's crazy. Five years. But nobody's okay with saying, hey, it just doesn't sound good, especially coming from him, considering how this last season and the previous season played out. And, and he had his fingerprints all over the Demise, demise, excuse me, of these last two seasons, whether it's the Jordan Poole incident, whether it's this year getting suspended for 17, 18 games, whether getting ejected for four other games, and then the nonstop chatter, this and that, and commenting on other players. I think people are just a little bit exhausted of Draymond Green, and when you hear that saying, we don't just want to watch a pro sports team play hard and not win for the next five years. We're just talking about this with the Giants. Yeah, sure, it's great to see the youngsters. But also want to win. But you can't have your cake and eat it, too. So, like, if Draymond was doing the Adonis Haslam, where I don't care if I play, I don't care how much I make, just I want to be on the roster. Like, we'd all be on, well, sign us up, right? But you can't say, I'm worth $30 million a year, and there was other teams that were going to offer me, and I'm going to go for you. Dog, like, you've got to compromise a little. So if you want to stay with the Warriors and they want you, get, do we really have to make – you know, top dollar at every turn and stymie other positions for other players to play because you have to play like right now. Like Draymond went off the bench for what, two games? Yeah. He couldn't wait to get back in the starting lineup. Well, no, I, I maybe. Okay, but, but he three needed years to, from now. But you know what, though? He needed to start because his team defensively needs Draymond but Green. that's the problem you know? with the Warriors. He needs Draymond he Green defensively. Ever, there's always an excuse on why you can't turn and, the and, he, and, he, and, and to me, this is not a money situation. This has nothing to do with money to me. I didn't take these comments. What it, he's paid what he's paid. You know, he, he is what he is. The team says he's worth $25 million a year. He's worth $25 million a year. Yeah. The team says so-and-so's worth $20 million a year. He's worth $20 million a year. I'm going to stop pocket watching for a second here. I'm just looking at what he's talking about and how he's talking about it. Like, I just thought yesterday, talking to Shaq, whether it's the Lakers, Warriors, and I get the back for better or competitors, but there's no way you're fronting Shaquille O'Neal. There's no way Clay Thompson is guarding Kobe Bryant. That's not happening here. But when you say at the end of that cut, hey, if we give it our all and we're struggling, I'll go down with the ship here. I'm fine with losing for the next five years. That's not that doesn't that doesn't sit well with a lot of people. That doesn't sit well with me. I understand again. He's trying to say that I want to be with this organization forever. Cool. That's great. People want to be part of the Golden State Warriors. Who knew? I never thought that would happen in the nineties, in the two thousands. But it's the way you say it, oh. and it's who's saying it. Like Steph Curry, can you imagine Steph Curry or hell, some of the greatest competitors in our life? Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. I think Kobe Bryant was fine with not going to the playoffs the last five, six years of his career. No. He was cursing out Mitch Kupchak. Dude, I need some better players. What's going on around here? Get Dwight out of here. Get Nick Young out of here. You imagine Michael Jordan, who was obsessed with winning, saying, yeah, I'm fine with just not making the playoffs the last five years. Did you, because I I saw some people interpret it this way. Did you interpret his statement as a subconscious admission that they can't get it done anymore? I did not interpret it like that, but I could see how people would. Um, If that is the case... If that is the case, and he knows they can't compete, then how hard are these players going to play knowing that? Because here's what we have. This is what we have. This is what happened in 2019-2020. Jamar Green knew it was going to be a struggle to win without Clay Thompson and Stephen Curry. And what did Jamar Green say? It was hard to get up for games knowing they had no shot at winning. And you didn't get the best of Jamar Green. You didn't get max effort. So baked off of that, that was four or five years ago. What if we know that, hey, we got no shot at winning. We're out here trying to play. Like, am I going to get max effort? I don't am know. I going to see I you know. die for that loose ball, a 50-50 ball, diving know. into the crowd? You know what I'm saying? There's a lot baked into that. So I just don't like it. I don't like when things are said like that. I'm not here to tell them to shut up in podcasts. But 
when you say, like, hey, I'm fine with losing the last five years, I do take issue with that because I doubt Joe Lacob is fine with losing for the next doubt, five years. Doubt, I doubt Steph Curry's I cool with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think anybody's caring. And then the bottom line starts to get affected. If the fans know, hey, this team's going to be losing the last five years, are fans going to be spending top dollar to go to Warrior games? No. No, no. Uh, when I heard him talk yesterday, boy, it sure feels like Clay's coming back. And he's going to line himself up with Steve Kerr. It just feels like to me, when I heard him say this, I got the feeling, all right, they're going to bring back Clay on a two year deal. And the next two years is Kerr, Curry, Draymond, Clay, retirement tour. How would you feel about it that? It feels like a Madonna, Rolling Stones. Hey, this is our final would, tour. How would you come, feel, how come would you feel about us. that? You, um, you, sound, you would like that, huh? That's an admission of it's over. Mm. And I don't want it to be over. So, like, there's a, a part of me that still thinks. Like you need to, you owe it to yourself to try to reimagine the team but, and come up with a different version. What if he's just being realistic, saying, "Hey, this is where we're at. This is where he we're doesn't at. own the team. He's <laughs> not the GM. He's a player." Yeah, but what if he's a player saying that, saying, but "Hey, this is where prob- we're at." This is the problem: is the players have too much power. We all want player empowerment right. until they control things on their terms, and it actually is negatively affecting the organization. Because, like, the organization at the whole, if you care about being a Warrior fan long-term, wow. you want to win again. You want Curry to be back in the Western Conference Finals. And rolling it back, right. almost all, we keep coming back to the same thing. Yeah. Rolling it back no, that's isn't not good it. enough. I don't think that's the option. By the way, uh, some breaking news in the NBA. The Cleveland Cavaliers just dismissed Coach J.B. Bickerstaff. He is gone after he led the Cavaliers to the Conference semifinals and won 99 regular season games in the past two years. Love, but they are firing... Huh. Firing J.B. Bickerstaff at three left Cleveland to back-to-back playoff appearances. So what did they do with Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell? Also, Stephen Curry yesterday. Uh, this got buried. We were talking about positivity. Yeah. Steph Curry became the 26th player in league history to earn 10 All-NBA honors when he was wow. named third-team All-NBA yesterday. So that was pretty cool with Steph Curry making third-team All-NBA did, in the league. Did you see what else happened with uh, Steph Curry? No. Steph Curry also has a liquor that's going to be featured at Bottle Rock. Oh, oh, Jimmy's Cut. Yeah. Jimmy's Cut Whiskey. Yeah, it's at one of like the premier like food yeah. uh, stations at Bottle Rock. Yeah, shout out to uh, Stody and the crew up there. Yeah. Shout out to I didn't even know he there. had his own. No, Jimmy's Cut. Yeah, that's been around for a couple years now. Gen- whiskey, what, Jimmy's whiskey? Cut. Yeah, whiskey. And you've had it? I have not had it yet. Oh, okay. Are you a whiskey guy? Oh, I like being some bourbon. No, I'm not a big I'm drinker, but I am a whiskey guy. Is bourbon I do and like whiskey the same thing? I don't know. I like to have a little hair on my chest. You know what I'm saying? Bourbon and whiskey are the same. Thing? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're not a big drink. I thought you were, you're Irish. I stopped drinking a long time ago. And and look at unlike other Irish who drink Jameson, your boy here was drinking forty ounces. Oh boy. Yeah. So let's let's move on. Yeah, exactly. Let's move on and get to Shark Week, man. It's Shark Week. Shark it's always week. Shark Week here on the Morning Rose. Well, we're not having breakfast with Baldy right now. We're not having brunch with Baldy. We're not having beers with Baldy. But it is Shark Week here at Copper Skillet Courtyard in Martinez. The folks here are eating breakfast, Baldy, and they're saying, where's where's Baldy at? We got a flat jack of pancakes waiting for him. Triple stacks. These guys are crushing things, Baldy. Where the hell are you at right now? Just chilling with the fish in South Beach watching Dolphins practice? So, something like that. I'm in South. <laughs> I'm definitely in South Florida. Uh, it feels like it. It feels like summer out here. I uh, miss you guys, but uh, I'd love to be there. Uh, just, uh, you know, we're home away from home right now. We Baldy, are home away from home. Baldy, breakfast, okay? <laughs> what is your favorite dish, your go-to for breakfast? Uh, it never changes. I mean, I eat steak and eggs every day. <laughs> oh, my God. Every, every day. Oh, my God. Well, I, well, it never changes. <laughs> I mean, I went through oatmeal. I, I had cornflakes when I was a kid and Rice Krispies. And <laughs> I had that fruit and yogurt thing for a while, and then I just said, screw it. Let's just get to it. Let's get just do it. steak and eggs every morning. 
Every morning with the hash browns on the side. Let me tell you, Jay here at Copper Skillet Courtyard, yeah. Jay Martinez, he got us in here. We got here about 5.40 in the morning. I mean, next thing you know, there's an omelet with spinach and bacon and potatoes on the side. Then there's eggs, Benedict with corned beef hash, Baldy. <laughs> then there's a triple stack of pancakes. Yeah. Then there's this fat waffle with maple syrup and bacon on the side yeah. with the butter just melting onto it. I'm looking at fried sunny side eggs up. I got fries in front of me. We've got Four plates still with breakfast burritos, <laughs> flatjacks. Baldy, we need you, man. When you coming out here having some breakfast with us? My tummy, dude, it's, it's about to pop right now. <laughs> that's a good start to a day. That's for sure. <laughs> it is. It, it is. Hey, hey, Baldy, <laughs> let, let's start here. OTAs this week. Bonte and I have been talking about this, and I just said with Nick Bosa, you know, I wanted him, when I pay you $120 million, the richest contract at the time for a defensive player, I want you at everything. Just as a leader, I want your face there. I want your energy there. I want young guys to pick your brain. I just, when you're the highest paid employee, I want you there. Bonte keeps telling me, Joe, OTAs don't matter. But it does feel like we're putting a different emphasis on OTAs. As a former player, how has OTAs changed and do they matter? I think they matter. I think they matter. I mean, you got a new defensive coordinator, Nick Sorensen, this year. I mean, it's a new, different. I don't know how much it's going to uh, change right. from what they did a year ago or a year before that. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, I'm not privy to that right now. Um, I was at Dolphins practice the other day. What's amazing to me is when the stars aren't there, it's awfully dull. Like, mm. there was, Tua was at a Nick Saban, you know, celebrity golf tournament, excused. No Tyreek, no Jalen Waddell, no OBJ, no Teron Armstead. Like, it's just like, okay. You know, it was good to see Javon Holland, a couple guys. But for the most part, like, you take the stars away from a team like Nick Bosa, like, it's just not very exciting. And so if it's not very exciting for a guy like me, is it that exciting for, you know, the guys inside the building? I'm not sure. Yeah. Now, you know, Baldi, it's not that I don't think OTAs are important because you make some very good points there about new coaching staff, new players, new personnel on the defensive line. You want to get to know your new teammates. But – I don't think it's the end of the world. Yeah. You know, you see these sneak pieces like, oh, my God, so-and-so's not in attendance here. It's spring ball. I get it. There's no pads. The men get separated come training camp. We figure out who the real football players are when the pads come on. But I think it is good that, you know, Bosa is around after missing training camp or whatnot. But also just how, how, how much has it changed? Because it seems like there's so much emphasis yeah. on non-padded practices, whereas back in the day you never really heard, never read, read reports about mini camps and OTAs or whatnot. It's changed. It's changed a lot. And so, you know, one of the things I feel like OTAs are important is, like, players, they can't have any sort of, uh, you know, activity, any interaction with coaches until, you know, into April. And so for teams that season ended at New Year's or the week, you know, first week in January, yeah. to not be around new coaches and, and new way of doing things until April, that seems kind of crazy. I mean, yeah. we, you know, so that, that, that is not a good thing. So you have to sort of make up for it a little bit with OTAs. But I do think there's a benefit um, to having the guys out there. There just is. There's a camaraderie. There's Every team is a new team. Every team starts at ground zero. Every team, uh, regardless of what they did the year before, it's, it's a new – it always feels new. I had a teammate <laughs> – a teammate of mine, yeah, I, I don't even mind, you know, his name his name. He was a great player for a long time, Ron Heller. Like, you know, we, I remember one year we lost to the Cowboys in the divisional championship round. So that's like middle of January. We come back for mini camp like in May. He couldn't remember one single play. Like slant 24, he had no idea what that was. Like in four months, he forgot the entire playbook. And he was in his 10th year. Like, you know, I mean, you have to, you, you got to kind of, um, it, it, you just have to rewire the brain. You know, the time is, you've had a lot of time off. You've done your vacations. You've had your injuries. You did your rehab, whatever. Like, let's get back into the, let's get the brain back into playing football. All right, so we're talking about guys who are there, guys who aren't there. The guy who wasn't there, and again, it's, it's I guess, voluntary, is Christian McCaffrey. And Bonte and I have been kicking this around. Like, Ayuk wants $30 million a year. Debo's going to make about $25, $30 million this year. Trent's making almost $30 million per year. If I'm McCaffrey, if ever there was a time to say, hey, I'm only making 14, and I don't know how many more years I got left, it does feel like now is the time. I know the running back market is suppressed for a variety of reasons, but of all the players at that position, 
doesn't the timing feel just right for someone like Christian McCaffrey to try to cash in for one last little payday here? Not only that, but he's seen every other great player on that team cash in. Yep. So, I mean, what's he going to do? Like, take a pay cut, take a haircut, not cash in? I mean, it started with Fred. Fred cashed in. Nick cashed in in the last minute last year. Debo cat. I mean, Juice cashed in for a second time. Yeah. So, like, what? You know, he's just looking at going. Okay, um, we, we've got a team of great stars, um, and I'm one of those players. Uh, you can rank him any way you want, and you could say anything you want about the running back market. He was the MVP of the team. So why wouldn't he try to cash in while he can right now? Wow, offensive player of the year in the NFL as well. How, how different is his offense? Yes. I don't even want to imagine. I don't either. But if he does hold out, the Niners say, hey, we're not going to budge here because you do take a lot of punishment. And if we pay you this money, there's no guarantee. Heck, there's no guarantee for anybody the last 17 games, but especially a guy like Christian McCaffrey who's touching the ball 20 to 25 times a game. Do they have the personnel to make up for a loss like that? I would talk about a special, special player and what he does out of the backfield as a wide receiver. How dramatically different does this offense look, Baldy, without a Christian McCaffrey? Well, they're not going to score nearly as many points. You know, so the point totals are going to be down right away. Um, we don't really know what it's going to look like because since he came, they've just been the best offense in football. Uh -huh. So what's it going to look like if he goes away or he's not there? I mean, they're not going to be the best offense in football. They're not going to score the kind of – you put Elijah Mitchell in there, you put, you know, Isaac Rendo in there, you can put some of these guys in there. They're not going to look the same. I mean, he's he's just a unique player, and I don't know if anybody smells the goal line quite like he does. <laughs> you, you think he's the best player at the position in the league, right, Baldy? Yes. Okay, yes. so the difference between him being number one and whoever is number two, is that the greatest divide in the NFL at any position? Well, I mean, if you just say, okay, if you just go down to the Rams and look at Kyron Williams, look at the Rams when Kyron Williams missed five weeks of the season. I don't know if they won a game. Wow. Like you, and then you look at Kyron Williams led the league in yeah. rushing yards per game. Mm -hmm. You put that guy back in the lineup and watch Matt Stafford and watch, you know, uh, Puka and Cooper. Watch those guys go to work. Like it's so much of this offense, and it, it's very similar between what McVay's doing and what Kyle's doing. I mean, so much of what they're doing is just play action and selling the run and getting that thing going and just getting the defense to bite on those fakes. And you take either one of those guys out of their offense, they don't look anything similar to what they do when they're in there. Baldy, what do you look for at OTAs? What are you specifically watching for? Is it communication with coaches, new players? Are you looking at the rookies? I'm watching you take photos at the Dolphins practice. And that D-line room looks phenomenal with Bradley Chubb and uh, Chop Robinson. I love the name Chop Robinson coming out of Penn State. But what do you look for at OTAs? It, it, it's really everything. For example... Like, I'm watching Jalen Phillips. I'm a big Jalen Phillips fan. Like, he tore his Achilles on Black Friday last year, um, you know, against the Jets. And yep. he's still walking with a limp. You know, it's not 100%. By, so I'm looking at him. I'm watching, you know, just uh, Muhammad Kamara uh, and his takeoff. I'm watching um, Jordan Poyer and Javon Holland, the new, you know, you know, probably 16, 17 years of experience at safety, just learning a new defense that um you know that is being in installed right now uh and so it, it could be a, who's playing center you know it's a right. big position of need for them and so you know is lime eichenberg in there is uh you know austin brewer in there like who's who's manning the pivot so it's it's just a little bit of everything and then you know without Tua out there like you just see the ball hit the ground a whole lot you know and if i was watching brock purdy uh, it might be the opposite. The ball might right. never hit the ground. So right. little, little things like that. Hey, Baldy, Baldy, we got Memorial Day weekend coming up here. What are you doing for Memorial Day weekend? This is what I want to know. I like, think he's going to Florida where Panthers are you going? game. Yeah, where I think are you he's going? throwing rats on the ice with the Panthers doing? in the NHL playoffs. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be at, I'll, I was watching that Ranger game last night. Um, I'll definitely be at a hockey game for sure. Uh, you know, I've still got this, you know, this bionic brace on my arm here. Yeah, what's so going on limited. there, Baldy? Yeah, yeah, what's going uh, on there? Like you lifting too much lock. weights? Yeah, what's going on, man? It's just, uh, you know, I tore a tricep. Wait, 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 how, you like, tear, hold on, why, how are you tearing triceps, Baldy? What are you doing, yeah. block hitting the slanted Miami-Dade yeah, County? What's I mean, going could, on, man? Uh, you know, I, I could tell you a story that I was in the water and a hammerhead was chasing me and I was climbing a ladder with one arm getting out and 
you know, the tricep snap, but that didn't happen. We we, uh, we believe it, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and I was in the Bahamas, I don't know, six weeks ago, and, you know, I, instead of putting my flippers on in the water because it was so rough like I usually do, I put them on the sand, and then I tripped, and I fell, and I hit this concrete something or another, and that was it, man, just hey. popped it. Well, B- Baldy, I- I'm listening to all of these different he podcasts. He looks like Lane Johnson right now. Crazy, right? He, he looks can like play right well. tucker right I now and fit right in with the brace. I love it. You know, I'm listening to all these podcasts, and these college guys were explaining how in college, they are basically at the facility 10, 11 months out of the year, if not all 12 months out of the year. And then they get to the NFL, and it's like, yeah, you show up for a couple weeks, and then you go on summer vacation. What are some of the things – that you see from these young guys like is it that dramatically different the lifestyle going from college to the nfl in terms of freedom well yeah i mean first of all i mean you know look almost every single college kid drops out i don't care how far away they are from the degree at the end of this winter semester (laughs) all right so now then they're just working out for the combine and the draft Mm -hmm. yeah but prior to that i mean you're still a student you're still going to class for the most part, I mean, 90% of guys, still, they're still going to class, so they're doing all of that. And then when they're not in class, they're at the facility. They're, they're either working out, they're getting treatment, they're going to practice. You know, so you're kind of like chained to your facility. Here, you know, um, first of all, okay, you're in Santa Clara, but you could be living anywhere in the Bay Area. Right. You, you know, you could be in any one of those towns. And so now you got your car, you're on the freeway, you know, you're... you're you're going downtown, you're going, you know, across the bay, you're in the, like, you could be doing anything up until the point where you got to show up. And so, yeah, there's a, I mean, that kind of gets some guys in trouble, you know, with all that free time and, and money and, and options and stuff like that out there. That's why you kind of hope that these guys just really stick together as a group and kind of do everything as a group, whether it's going to play golf or, you know, taking the day off or whatever. Like, you just hope that they're all kind of hanging together. You know, Baldy, we didn't, we haven't talked to you about the schedule. I know you was on the schedule release shows on mm-hmm. NFL Network, and we were getting giddy over their schedule. You know, the Niners opening up on Monday Night Football against the New York Jets, and Robert Sala and Sauce Gardner playing press man on Debo and Brendan Ayuk, and Aaron Rodgers making his return. What are some of the games that pop out to you in the upcoming season, man? Because this every schedule looks just loaded. I get headaches watching, looking at the Niners schedule, the Ravens schedule, the Chiefs schedule. I think the Ravens have – Three games in ten days in late December. What are some of the games that popped out to you on the schedule? Uh, well, I mean, they put look. Um, you know, they're playing Monday night at home because of Aaron Rodgers. I mean, that's 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 what they're selling on that. There, there's only a standalone one Monday night game, the opening week of the season. So it's Aaron Rodgers coming to San Francisco. So you get to see a Rod maybe maybe for the last time in the Bay Area. You know, he's coming home. Um, you go to Minnesota, I mean, you went to Minnesota last year, and Kirk Cousins carved you up. You know, he dropped back 45 times. He didn't get sacked once. Yep. And you, So there's like a little payback right there, whoever the quarterback is going to be. And then, look, anytime the 49ers go to play SoFi to play the Rams, it's wow. a 49er home game. Yep. Like, it, they just dominate, and they take over the entire area. So, so I don't know. You, you get the Patriots at home, right. Arizona at home. I mean, they should get off to a good start. Uh, a really good start, and that's kind of what every team wants to do. And then, you know, they got to buy at the right time, right, right in the middle of the season. I mean, I think the schedule's well, pretty much in their favor. Well, I was going to ask you the Chiefs game because Jask and I have got bought back and forth on this. And Paul, they felt like when the Niners last won the Super Bowl ninety four ninety five. They beat the Cowboys in a regular season, 21-14. They go on to beat them in the NFC mm. Championship game, 38-28. But it feels like that doesn't happen if they didn't win that regular season game. They needed to get that mental block saying, hey, we could beat this team. Is that one of those mental hurdles for the Niners week seven against Kansas City? Do they have to win that game? I know it doesn't have anything to do with tiebreakers or whatnot, but for me and a lot of fans, it's like you got to try to beat Kansas City once. Shanahan's over against Kansas City. Do they have to win that game just for their own mentals? Well, you know, it's interesting because they have 10 days to get ready for the game. Mm -hmm. They're in Seattle on a Thursday night prior to that. And Kansas City has to play four teams that are coming off a Thursday night game like that. Wow. So they've got a bunch of teams that are going to be as rested as you can be in the middle of the season like that. So they got 10 days to get ready for that game against Kansas City. I mean, do they have to win it? No, they don't have to win it. Um, you know, the, 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 the real games come in January. But, yes, it would be um, a mental thing to go back. And it's not going to erase the, the Super Bowl loss by any stretch. No doubt. But 
uh, and, and it never does, and it, and it shouldn't. But at the same time, you always measure yourself against the best teams in the league. Yeah. That's, that's how you get your confidence. Right. You want a good schedule. You want a, a schedule to sharpen you up like that. All right, I, as we bring up the Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes is all over the Internet. He's trending right now. Fans are claiming he's severely out of shape on the video. Have you seen the video of him walking in to the facility? No, but I, I, I remember the man body that he showed last year. Right. Where it's, it's a pretty pronounced gut. Um, <laughs> You know, I mean, look, first time I saw Peyton Manning, that wasn't pretty to look at. You know, like some of these guys, like, just keep the whip, the whip. You know, just keep the right. arm, the arm. Like, who really cares what's underneath the shoulder pads? It doesn't make any difference at all. We, we, I've seen Will Levis, looks like he's chiseled out of marble. Like, but he's no Patrick Mahomes. Now, he right. might become a good player. Right. Like, it really doesn't make any difference at all. Baldy, I don't know if you ever heard this, but Brett Boone had a great line he was talking about. He goes, you know, you, you, you can't pull fat. Like, you could pull a muscle. <laughs> you can't pull fat. Yeah. I, watched, I, I have heard that line, and there is a lot of truth to that, too. <laughs> there yeah, is. I haven't pulled anything. I got nothing but fat around me, oh, Paul. Yeah, I got one of those active. bodies. And we remember Jim Drunkenmiller. He looked like a weight room yeah, he warrior. Did. He Kaepernick. was chiseled, and he played, what, two two games in his career? So, anyway, Brian Baldinger here on the morning roll. Stopping by here as we're having breakfast, breakfast Excuse me, copper skillet. Courtyard in Martinez, Baldy. This place is made for you. We'll get you back yeah. out to the Bay yeah. Area. We'll do breakfast. Do we'll do brunch with Baldy. Breakfast with Baldy. No matter what, steak and eggs. Yeah, hash browns, potatoes. You name it, Baldy. Just, just order up the ribeyes. Just get the ribeyes going, man. We'll, we'll get them more than one for sure. <laughs> Baldy, here's the problem. When you start, when I cooked for you in the backyard, you you couldn't even let the steak finish. You, you had your hand right on the fire. Dude, dude, you were ready to eat. You it grabbed walking. the lamb chops right off the grill, Baldy. <laughs> I don't, like my meat to, I don't like my meat to get cold. No, <laughs> like, you grabbed it right off the grill like a savage, man. <laughs> hey, happy Memorial Day. I'm a carnivore, man. I can't help it. That, you are, man. You hey, are, Bobby, man. Happy we love Memorial it. Day. It's one of my favorite yeah, you too, times guys. of the year. All, all the best, sick. man. It signifies the opening of summer, and I know you love to be outdoors like we do. And so it's just yep. enjoy the weekend, bro. Th thanks a lot. I appreciate you guys, man. I'll talk I to you real it, soon. Uh, absolutely, Baldy, Baldy, Brian Baldinger here on the morning roll on 